Hello and welcome to BQ Prime. Uh, joining me today is uh, James Barkley. He is the team principal for Jaguar TCS. Uh, so I wanted to ask you first, James, uh, how different is it driving or developing a Formula E car from a Formula 1 car? Yeah, really good question. And, and the long answer is it's very, very similar. This, this is the most advanced, the most efficient, the most powerful all-electric racing car that's ever existed. So we're pushing the limits of electric vehicle technology. And uh, Formula E is the pinnacle of electric racing in the world. And you have Formula 1 as a pinnacle of internal combustion engine racing. Uh, we believe this is the future, though, as we move towards full electric uh, futures um, for not just in this country, but around the world, as, as electrification becomes the, the main form of mobility. Formula E is pioneering this incredible technology. So we we, we're looking at all aspects of the car to improve performance from the, the powertrain, uh, the motor, the inverter, the software and the controls, or the digital world that makes this car go faster as well. And that's where the partnership with TCS is so critical to us, is enabling this kind of digital control of the car as well as the physical side, which is really, really important. So, yeah, I always liken it to as complex as Formula One. Um, we just have a different set of regulations. At the heart of them, though, is this incredible all-electric powertrain. And we kind of, as a sport, we have... The most, I believe, the most professional driver lineup in the world. We have, we have, you know, literally in, in Formula E, we have 22 drivers. Everyone is fully professional, who's hired purely to to race without bringing any money or sponsorship with them. We have some incredible car manufacturers like Jaguar, like Porsche, like Nissan, to name a few. Um, and we have some incredible teams. So it's an incredibly competitive environment, but one in which, if you are successful, it means you've developed the best technology and you've delivered the best teamwork. All right. Uh, you mentioned about TCS and the so. Would you like to elaborate on the role that TCS plays in the development of the Formula E car for you? Yeah, well, obviously, we're incredibly proud, firstly, to have TCS as our title partner. Um, as a proud part of the Tata family and with TCS, we have an amazing partnership, which starts here with the racing team, but also is very, very important. We have a main partnership with Jaguar Land Rover as well. TCS yeah. are enabling our all-electric future. Um, so intertwined with our race team is also the learning, the knowledge we have can also then transfer into our future production vehicles. And TCS has a huge range of capability. And one example I touch on is things like digital twin technology. In Formula E, we race in the heart of city centers. It's one of the unique parts of the DNA of Formula E. Because we race electric cars with zero emission and the cars are quieter, it means we can race in city centers. Um, but those city centers are not tracks you can practice on any day of the week. So in order to practice, we have to simulate. And the drivers spend a lot of time in the real world simulator. And it's what we call a driver in the loop simulator, but it also has hardware in the loop. So basically we create a digital twin of the physical car in the digital world and the drivers and the team practice and prepare before we come to a race like here in Hyderabad where we can't practice before we come. So by the time Mitch and Sam roll out onto the track for the first time on Friday, they already have done hundreds and hundreds of laps of Hyderabad track. They would have worked with their engineers to set the car up and optimize the setup. And then we correlate digital to real world. And then after the race weekend, we'll come back to the simulator and we'll re-correlate to see how accurate we were. And that's just an ever improving model. So that's one example where TCS's capability, particularly in the space of digital twinning, allows us to become even more effective as a racing team. Uh there are certain rule changes that hap are happening with Formula E this year. You're having a pit stop, which requires you to charge the car at a pit stop. I think the power rating of the charger is 600 kilowatt, uh, kilowatts. So coming to that, how will be your battery management and what are the workings that go on in that battery management as well as charging that fast? So are we looking at yeah. a 30 second pit stop or a minute pit stop? So how are you planning on those lines, so if you can tell us? No, absolutely. So the pit stop uh, comes in later this season, so we haven't had it yet. We're in fast charging gets introduced later this season. Um, the first few races we're focusing on, obviously, getting to grips with the new car. But the fast charging element with the pit stop will introduce well, two things. One is a big strategic kind of opportunity and challenge, right? So when to pit, uh, when not to pit, they will play a big out outcome on the race. You know, if you pit at the wrong time, potentially it really hurts you or it could really help you. So having the right strategy is really, really critical. And I always say formally is like a game of chess with 22 other players played at over you know at over 180 miles an hour right it's an incredibly complex game of chess um, so that's the first thing and then the second thing to your point is the technology side so I always liken the challenge imagine you're using your mobile phone whilst you're charging it and you're in the sunshine eventually the mobile phone goes stops and it gives you the warning and it has to shut down we can't have that because if we have it we're out of the race so our job is to ensure we are maximizing performance 
And then when you come to charge, that puts a big load into the battery, it pushes the temperature of the battery up, and we have to manage that temperature. And then we're out on track going as fast as we, we can, we're, we're asking the maximum. So we have to balance not only the, st the state of charge, so the percentage of battery we have remaining, we also have to manage the thermal point. So on the design of the car, um, we look to optimize cooling, and also from the software side, we look to optimize how we deploy energy and when, how we use our power and when, to ensure that we don't push ourselves into that critical zone where the battery derates. So that's part of the challenge we have as a team, and it's those two things we're always blending. Thermal with, uh, with amount of charge left, mm -hmm. um, that's part of what Mitch and Sam and the, and the team are constantly communicating on and working on. One final question about the competition. So who do you see as the biggest challenger for Jaguar TCS, and how do you consider our, uh, an Indian rival, Mahindra, uh, in the scheme of things for you? Well, yeah, f firstly, like I said earlier, Formula E is incredibly competitive. Um, the quality of the manufacturers, the teams, the drivers. So honestly, everyone is, is, is a potential, you know, real challenger. We can't leave anyone, um, uh, you know, we can't underestimate anybody. But of course, there are then the big established brands, right? Mm. Porsche, Nissan, uh, Maserati, DS, these are all incredibly successful car companies in racing. Um, and they have, you know, huge teams, huge resources. So, you know, for us as a team, we, we, we're never complacent. That's something which is really important for us. We're always doing as best we can with the resource and the, and the tools and equipment. And importantly, that's why having partners is so critical to us. The you know, likes of TCS help us gain advantage over our comp competition. But yeah, everyone is incredibly strong and you simply look at the quality of who's in this championship. And uh, it means that when you are successful though, you've really earned that success. Thank you so much, James. Thank you for catching up with us.